What's up everyone? Welcome back to another comic book showdown. This time we are looking at X-Force number one from 1991 going up against X-Force number one published in 2019. Now uh, yeah there's a uh, some stuff going on with both of these. This was a lot closer than I thought it was. Well I shouldn't say closer. This was just a uh, this went one way I didn't think it was going to. And um, there are a couple different reasons for that, but we'll get into that in just a minute. First, let's head to the tale of the tape. All right, X-Force number 91, not number 91, X-Force number one, published in 91. Uh, this is credited um, pretty much in all the issues Rob Liefeld is in as uh, Rob Liefeld taking up the whole shebang. Fabian Nacieza, or however you pronounce his name, is credited as a writer in there. But yeah, this is this is all Rob Liefeld and his story and everything. I think maybe Fabian just worked around some words or whatnot. But yeah, so Fabian uh, Nassieza is credited as the writer. The plot and the art is all credited to Rob Liefeld. The colors in issue one are credited to Brad Vancada. And the reason I distinguish in uh, episode one or uh, issue one is because there are numerous colors throughout these uh, throughout these first few issues, and we're really only looking at issues ones for both of these both of these comic books. But the colorist um, he makes some weird choices, which we'll get into in X Force number one from 1991, and it doesn't help that there are different colors in different books uh, going forward. Anyways, and then uh, finishing off on the X Force 1991, the original run ran from 1991 till 2004. Headed over to the uh, X Force first published in 2019, the uh, credited writer is Benjamin Percy. The artist doing the art and inks, or however he draws, is uh, Joshua Kassara. Colors by Dean White. And this original run started back in 2019 and is currently still ongoing. Uh, first off, let's, uh, let's take a look at these covers, shall we? All right, yeah, so X-Force number one from 1991, of course, you know, early 90s, just before Image kicks off in 1992, we got this big bombastic art double page spread for the cover, fold-out cover there with, uh, Cable and Feral, and I think her name was Boom Boom, uh, right there on the first, uh, in the front of the issue, and in the back we got Warpath, Domino, Shatterstar, and Cannonball. Um, yeah, so, uh, like I said, pure 90s goodness and, ty and types of uh, 90s art style. Rob Liefeld at his, uh, at his best there. Of course, if you, at first glance, it looks pretty awesome, especially if you're a fan of that uh, 1990s style. But as you take a closer look, you can see, you know, things aren't totally like, Where's Shadowstar's hand holding that sword? Where are Cable's hands, for that matter, holding that gun? They kind of just all blends in together. And uh, that I, I, that might have something to do with uh, Liefeld's art, but it also has something to do with that colorist, too. So we'll get into more of that in just a minute. But yeah, definitely, if you're a fan of 1990s uh, art, this is this is right up your alley right there. And then we got the X-Force from 2019, number one. As much as I do like some, you know, total chaos, bombastic 90s art, I gotta give the cover nod to this one. I mean, this is has a very cool layout. Uh, Dustin Weaver's the artist on this, so it's not the same artist that's inside the book. But it just, it's a very cool layout. It has some great uh, characters on the front and center. And I guess, you know what, uh, Quagmire, I think is his name is, uh, Omega Boy, I, I, I can't remember. Um, anyways, he's on this cover. He doesn't really play a part until issue number two in the rest of the series. I guess he'll be a member of X-Force. And I guess so will Colossus. I didn't really get past, uh, the first couple issues. Just because I'm really trying to focus on the first issues in these comic book showdowns to see, to basically see who, uh, which comic would make me want to read the next comic. Maybe both of them will, and then I'll have to give the edge to one of them. But yeah, in this issue, uh, Beast, Wolverine, and Jean Grey kind of take the, the main story here. Domino does kind of in a way, but um, not in a way you'd suspect. But yeah, going back to the cover art, I mean, it, lo it looks pretty awesome. And I would give the nod to this, even though the uh, 1991 cover has that double page fold out spread there that is always very cool. This one is uh, this one's pretty cool itself. 
So going back to 1991, X Force number one, we open with, like I said, bombastic 1990s art. Rob Liefeld def definitely takes care of the reader as far as uh, those wants and needs from the 1990s art style fans. Double page spreads. Uh, I think later in the issues, issue four or five, something like that. I think it was issue four. I mean, the book is three quarters double, a double page spreads. And when you get to that issue, if you ever read that, it's really not needed. It's supposed to be this big confrontation, I think is what he's going for. But a lot of it is like talking heads kind of, but he made them in double page spreads. So I guess those are more exciting. Anyways, uh, yeah, so double page spreads, X-Force 91, Cable and his gang, um, they are going after the mutant liberation, mutant, I don't know, some type of mutant terrorist, um, but we'll get into these, uh, pages here. Yeah, so Cable and Shadowstar and they're, they're taking out, um, or they're trying to fight off the, the evil mutants here. I will say, as far as you know, that, that in-your-face action style from the 90s, um, it is straight up on display in this. Like, this is an awesome page right here with Warpath knocking this guy into oblivion. Uh, you know, it, it just looks cool. And I can definitely see, you know, reading this as a young young guy or teenager getting into comics. Uh, definitely, especially in the 1990s, you're like, whoa, what the heck is this? Like, that just is in-your-face action. And then we get a big reveal also in this issue that uh, the leader of this, you know, the evil mutants that Cable and his team are going after is Strife, who looks definitely badass in this issue. The complaint I have is that um, he doesn't really show up until later issues. Like, he, he shows up here, and then he eventually gets away. And then we get into this other story of, like, mutant terrorists trying to run the world through economic, you know, upheaval or something like that is is a very convoluted story so that's one of the issues with uh you know rob liefeld running the whole shebang and i don't know maybe uh at the time they were there were rumblings or something of already you know liefeld and the others trying to do their own thing and one their own thing they definitely wanted more control as you can see like rob liefeld is credited with uh you know with everything Where where's that credit box let me find that yeah, so see here in the bottom of the page, this is issue one with the credit scene or the credits for the for the uh you know the the creative team on this issue. Rob Liefeld, everything but dot dot dot, words, letters, color art. So he's definitely you know he has the plot. He, obviously he's doing the art, but yeah, this is a this is all Rob Liefeld's story, and it kind of shows because it it, it sort of is all over the place. The art is front and center, and if that's all you're into comics for is, like, awesome art, um, yeah, this is, this is right up your bag then, but if you want more, if you, if you come for the awesome art, but you, you really want to stick around for a great story, the story is, you know, it's, it's, it wasn't that great, actually. Okay, let's jump over to X-Force 2019, and like I said, we got this great cover here, and once we get into this story, um, I read the first. I recently read the first issue of the newest Ghost Rider relaunch, and Benjamin Percy is on is the author on that. And as far as the first issue goes, I mean the first issue is pretty awesome. So I'm looking forward to getting back into that and seeing if he develops that further and better, or you know if it goes good or if it goes downhill. Benjamin Percy, I feel really does a great job with this first issue. I haven't really kept up with much of, you know, I should say, I should say that just the X-Men, but not really just the X-Men. I, I haven't kept up with much of comics lore as far as either company and either brand, X-Men, Spider-Man, uh, uh, Iron Man, over on DC, Superman, Batman. I I don't really know the backstory. I know the, the highlights about what stuff's going on and the big plot points that are going on in their respective universes. Um, so with that being said, this takes place in Krakoa and I guess this is at the time recently where Krakoa, Krakoa is like you know the mutant haven the the island of mutants that everyone who's a mutant can find peace at um so that's that's kind of um discussed here in this kind of you get the picture it's not really point blank so you have to kind of piece together those puzzles puzzle pieces but Benjamin Percy does a, a fairly good job and what we got here is we got Beast was out exploring the the island of Kokoa and he gets attacked by some some literal beast. 
um, and Wolverine jumps into action trying to save him and he's about to kill it but but Beast tells him no and Beast just wants everyone to get along this is supposed to be Kokoa in a peaceful place but Wolverine is just like hey man you're not you're not safe here you're not safe anywhere Wolverine being Wolverine you know so the action or, or not I shouldn't say the action but the uh the plot comes across pretty solid in these first few pages we have we get an understanding of what we're doing here, kind of, what's going on, Beast exploring, Wolverine being skeptical of everything, and so, uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed these, these, uh, sequential panels right here in the middle of the page, where Beast is talking to Wolverine, but Kokoa is supposed to be a refuge, and Wolverine replies, no more like a salad bar, every flower field meadow's got a hawk or a wolf or a snake lingering nearby, waiting for a taste, there's always a predator. So you can definitely see Wolverine's skepticism on display here. Here's where things get a little bit interesting for this first issue of X-Force. We got, uh, uh, a, I guess there's a gate or something that all visitors are supposed to come through. And everyone's freaking out because there's a there's a new group coming in and they're not using the gate. They're, they're coming in in a different way. And then we got, well, who is it? It's Kitty Pride and her marauders. There is no explanation on as to, like why Kitty Pride has a band of marauders around her. It looks like we got Firestorm. No, not Firestorm. I can't remember. Pyro. Uh, Kitty Pride. Looks like that might be Iceman there. Storm flying above. But who are these characters? I, I have no idea. So you would have to be reading previous X-Men. I think there was a, a Marauders title running around for a little while. But I had no idea. I was like, okay, what's Kitty Pride and her Marauders. What are they out doing? I guess they're out fighting because as you get into further in the issue, they're they bringing back a bunch of injured and Colossus is one of those injured. Uh, but yeah, so this kind of starts the point where it's like, you're losing me. Like, what's going on? Why why is Kitty Pride out there being a pirate, basically? Who knows? But we got Black Tom, who's kind of, I guess, the envoy or the, the emissary of the island. He, con he con contacts the island and the island speaks through him to everyone else. So he lets him in, I, I suppose. But there's really no, um, you know, backstory, or even just a side note, like a, a footnote at the bottom, read issue so-and-so to figure out or to find out why Black Tom is, you know, the emissary of the island or whatever. One thing that is splattered, uh, or not, I shouldn't say splattered, but scattered throughout these, um, these issues of this new X-Force are these pages here, and I'm not a big fan of these. I know this comes directly from Jonathan Hickman, who I guess was like the the architect of all of the X books for a little while. And this is this is I know it's from Jonathan Hickman because he's done this kind of stuff in his other books, especially his creator own books. And I'm just not a big fan of it. I think there's like four or five of these pages in this, and I'm like I don't want to read diagrams and things of what the weather is like I just I just want action and I want the story to come across sequentially I don't I don't need a page full of this stuff so yeah I would, I'm not a big fan of this stuff being in the book okay jumping back to X-Force 1991 we got Cable and his crew they've been fighting these evil mutants led by Strife but then the evil mutants and Strife get away they're they teleport somehow by this character named Zero and they get out of the way and now now Cable and his crew can't can't do anything. So Cable and his crew have to teleport out of the place too. And I, I guess they do some type of teleportation. And I'm wondering if that's what these colors on these page on certain panels here. Is that panel three up toward the top of the right corner? And in the bottom right corner, those those multicolored insets in the background. I don't I think that's what that's supposed to display. But it, it looks very, it looks cool on this page. But then when you go to the next page, when they teleport into their ship, the com the colors completely change. And I'm wondering, this. so this is a double page spread. And what we got here is right in the top left corner. Is that them teleporting in or out? I think it's in. So, But they're all just one color. And then they change to blue. And then it changed to these pinks and red right in the middle. Why? I don't understand the color choice in this. It doesn't really make sense. And this kind of hinders, if you read, I've read uh, four or five issues of this first run. And it kind of hinders, and is a big point of contention for myself at least, in this whole series. Because this colorist makes this choice in here and it looks odd, I guess. And I'm not sure if it's because he made these choices on purpose or like this is the beginning of the, uh, you know, computer art. And so you're able to do digital colors. 
and he's trying something new. Who knows? But then we get into issue f uh, two, I think he does the colors. No, I think someone else does the colors. I can't remember, but I know in the first five issues, there are four different colors. And they all have different palettes and they work different ways. And there are some pages, I mean, later on, I think it's in issue three, Juggernaut comes into play. And he's one color in one issue. And the next issue, there's a different colors. And he's the traditional, like, brownish red. But in that first issue that Juggernaut, sh Juggernaut shows up, he's like a reddish pink. It, it's so weird that it, it really does does distract from the story. When we get to the end of issue one of X-Force 1991, we we get a little bit of a cliffhanger. I, uh, at Cable was talking to, uh, I think it was Cannonball about what's going on. And Cannonball says, hey, Cable, you don't tell us a lot of stuff. He's like, well, you never ask. And then we get, he leaves, Domino comes down because Cable's working on the spaceship. And all of a sudden, Cable is doing this telekinetic type stuff, holding things. I'm not a big, um, I don't know a lot of Cable, like what he's, I know he's from the future and he's supposed to be like Scott Summers, some from the future or from alternate timeline or something like that. I don't know if he has telekinetic powers, but in this issue, it shows that he does. And Domino freaks out on him because nobody knows this. So Domino's like, hey, you better watch what you're doing around here. And if, if you do that and you get caught, you better be prepared to explain yourself. So that's a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, but the other one is that the, the there's a group that's, there's a government group that's going after Cable while Cable and his crew go after these evil mutants. The government group uh, is trying to bring him down. And what they end with was the, the guy leading the group, I think his name's Bridge or something like that. He says, okay, time to take down Cable. We need to get Weapon X. So what, what we get with is a, a teaser leading into issue two, X-Force, the Blood Hunters. Um, Deadpool's back, but it, supposedly that's Weapon X. Uh, fighting against Deadpool on the cover there. Like I said, I, I don't know a whole lot of this lore. Back in the early 90s, I wasn't into a whole lot of comics. I was mostly into like animation and stuff. So I don't know if this is supposed to be a big deal. This guy who's now taking the mantle of Weapon X. I know Deadpool was super popular at the time, but this other one, um, yeah, who knows? But if you do know, leave a comment for me down in the comments and let me know a little bit of history about this guy. But yeah, this is this was the big uh, teaser. Get me Weapon X and then this is going to be the issue for number two. So yeah, that's how that issue of X-Force number one ends. And it was okay. It was like, okay, well, especially if you're a Weapon X fan back in the 90s, I would say, oh yeah, I got to read that. I don't think they teased Deadpool at the back of issue one. But maybe by then, you know. The, the solicits were out and people knew Deadpool was going to be in it. But who knows? It was a it was an okay issue. You know, it's Rob Liefeld. I've always felt his art is kind of cool, but there's kind of like something off about it. And it it's it's enough that there's sometimes there's an artist that's like, well, he draws a certain way. And that's OK, because I find it interesting. If, if I don't like it, I find it interesting. Rob Liefeld definitely has his own style and, you know, people people make fun of him for certain things, whatever. Hey, he has his fans out there and I'm, I'm down with that. But as far as his style goes, it's a little, little more scratchy than I like. I like a little bit more cleaner line, which is why I've always kind of gravitated towards, you know, Jim Lee's type of artwork back in the 90s. But yeah, so... I don't know. It, it didn't grab me. I'm like, oh, Weapon X is going to be in the next issue. I got to check that one out. But it was a cool enough story. Back in X-Force from a first published in 2019, we get a little bit more story here. We got Charles Xavier. He's going to Sokovia on some type of goodwill, you know, retreat or like goodwill visit, something like that. And they're, they're supposed to be playing up, you know, this whole, whole thing about their, their friends with each other and everything. So... But we see, uh, it took me a minute in this panel. I was like, what, what is, why are they showing this little black thing that Charles Xavier is going to be drinking? And it took me a couple, couple times going over these pages to understand that he's, he's drinking down a tracker device because what's happened is in the beginning of this issue, um, Domino is infiltrating some type of evil organization and the evil organization gets the best of Domino. And what they end up doing is, as you can see here, this is these are uh, some terrorists or whatever from the evil organization. I don't, I didn't get past the issue, so um, I don't know. They, did they, I don't even remember if they named them. But anyways, you can see these these uh, guys. They took over. They hijacked a. They didn't really hijack an airplane. They they sabotaged an airplane, 
and uh, they they jump out of it, and they're jumping down to Krakoa because of that tracker device that's in Charles Xavier. You kind of have to piece that puzzle together because I didn't really, like I said, it, it took me a few minutes going over this, these pages. I'm like, what is going on? How did these guys figure this out? What was that in the drink? Oh, it was a tracker. And what you can see on these guys as uh, they have these white stripes along or white pieces along their skin. What they've done supposedly, I guess, is they've uh, they've taken Domino's skin and grafted across themselves because everyone's been looking for Domino, but no, but she hasn't responded to anyone. So they've grafted it to themselves because they're going to be noticed coming into you know the atmosphere or whatever it is of of Coco. People are going to see people people coming in. Oh, what's this? An unidentified person or whatever. But since they have Domino's skin grafted to themselves, everyone thinks it's Domino coming coming in and at the same time they're like well domino's here those are her you know biometrics or whatever but why isn't she responding and as this is happening uh we got black tom here who's like i said is kind of the emissary between the island and the rest of the mutants and he uh he's telling charles xavier hey man this is we got people coming and going even kitty pride and her marauders domino's not responding what is going up and uh, Charles Xavier just makes, you know, he says, hey, this is how it's going to be. We have to be, think nice things basically about everyone who comes to Krakoa and, and not, you know, have our guard up because these are mutants and this is supposed to be a mutant safe haven. Of course, when these guys land, uh, it is definitely nothing but uh, chaos and ne definitely not a mutant safe haven as they start taking out mutants left and right, shooting them everywhere. Everyone scatters, and that's when we get the X-Men, Beast, Jean Grey, and Wolverine. They are trying to, they jump into action, trying to figure everything out. What's going on? Who's attacking? Charles Xavier has taken off running, and somebody has taken off in chase after him. But Chase, but Charles stops, and he's trying to, he's trying to calm things down as, you know, Professor X would normally. And we get here right in the middle of this page, blam! With all three, Wolverine, Jean Grey, and Beast, their eyes wide open in shock. And Wolverine just tears into this dude. He's just like going to rip him to shreds into mincemeat. But Beast stops him because they've already killed everyone else on the island who attacked. And Beast stops him because they need someone else, you know, someone, someone alive to, to question. But when you get that page turn, oh boy. Oh boy. Someone alive to question because that dude just killed Professor X, supposedly. But yeah, that is a great page turn. That is a great cliffhanger. And yeah, man, um, this this was a this was like wow. This this sounds like a really cool story. Art's really good. I mean, the the artist competent and he has this little little bit of a grittiness to it. I'm not sure if that's that's him or like some of the colors adding to more stuff but it looks great but like I said it's 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 that cliffhanger at the very end Charles Xavier's um what is that so his cerebro mask I, I I know he wore it for a while and I I don't understand why I'm I'm not sure like I said I don't know all of the x-men lore but that cerebro mask with the bullet hole still smoking in the middle of it blood splattered everywhere yeah it's a one hell of a cl cliffhanger there so, in this comic book showdown, we had X-Force from 1991 versus X-Force from 2019. Um, like I said, the Liefeld art, it, it, you're going to love it if you're a Liefeld fan. But as far as art, I would have to give the nod to X-Force from 2019 because it's just, it's more competently drawn. And that's not a knock on Liefeld. Liefeld has his own style and that's how he draws. But that, that style was a little bit gritty in the 2019 X-Force and I would lean towards that especially with that cliffhanger man the cliffhanger definitely goes to X-Force from 2019 it makes me want to pick up that second issue immediately and find out what's going to happen X-Force from 99 1991 cliffhanger of Cable and his band get away and um I don't you're like okay they get away and then we got okay let's bring in X-Force to to figure out how they're going to capture a cable. It's, it, I don't know. I'm not bringing X-Force, what did I say? Bringing Weapon X to figure out how they're going to capture a cable. It's this, you know, it's just, uh, uh, so <laughs> I'm stumbling here. 
I want to I wanted to say X Force from 1991 was going to be this comic book showdown winner, but I can't do it. X Force from 2019, when Charles Xavier bites the bullet literally as a cliffhanger. X Force 2019 gets my vote, and it is the winner of this comic book showdown. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Uh, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Have you read either of these issues? Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, and if let me know if you agree with me or if you disagree with me. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.